Hi, I'm Teresa Coates and I'm here at Fat Quarter Shop and today we're going to be talking about making the self-binding blanket with cuddle and embrace fabrics. So the first thing we need to do when we're making a self-binding blanket is we need to figure out which fabrics we're going to use. For the outside of the blanket we usually use a Lux Cuddle or a Cuddle 3, which is a solid cuddle. And then for the middle you can use either a printed cuddle or you can use an embrace fabric. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make our marks on the fabric. So we need to decide how big our fabric or how big our blanket is going to be. So for this one, we're going to make it a smaller version, but you can make it whatever size you want. So if you wanted to make, say, a 40 inch blanket, then your middle, your finish in the middle would be 40 inches, and you're going to decide how big you want your borders to be. For this one, we've done two inches, and we'll mark, we'll mark that for you. And so we would do 40 inches plus two inches on each side for the border, so it would be a 44 inch square. So our outside is going to be a 44 inch square of the Lux Cuddle. The inside we're going to cut a piece that is the finish size of this, minus one inch. So if I wanted it to be a 40 inch blanket, I'm going to take off one inch and I'm going to make it a 39 inch square in the middle. Okay. So I'm going to cut those fabrics and then I'm going to mark these edges with my size of the binding. So for this one I'm going to mark two inches and I'm just going to mark it with a ballpoint pen and mark it all the way around. Once we've marked the corners, so I go ahead and I mark all of the corners with, and I've used a Sharpie with this one just so you can see it, but normally I just use a ballpoint pen and it won't show through the fabric. Okay, once we've marked all the corners, I actually come back in here with my ruler and I'm gonna line my 45 degree up with one of the lines that I've drawn. Okay, and I'm gonna line this up and then I'm actually just gonna mark right on the fabric where my 45 degree line is. And I'm gonna do that on all four corners so that they're marked just like this. I like to draw it so that my original two inch lines don't reach quite to the edge so that I'm not as likely to sew those lines because this is gonna be our sewing line. Okay, so once I've got all the lines drawn on here, then I'm actually just going to fold my fabric in half. And I'm going to line up my raw edges really neatly here. And then I'm going to pin them. Okay, and I'm going to pin on either side of this line. You can see this is the short one that I didn't mark all the way out, and this is my stitching line. And I know that because it goes all the way to the edge. Okay, so. I keep it so that my pins are on either side of this, far enough away that I can use my walking foot and it'll come right along here, and it won't. I won't have to take out any of those pins. So I stitched along here, I back at the beginning and at the end. I've used my walking foot and a 9014 stretch needle, it makes it much easier to work with. I stitch all the way, then I'm gonna take my pins out. Okay, so I've sewn it along here, take, taken the pins out, I cut it off at about a half an inch seam allowance. I just use my scissors and I cut it right off. Doesn't matter if it's perfect. It needs to be a, at least a quarter of an inch. But the nice thing about this fabric is because it's a knit fabric, it's not going to fray at all. So you can cut it quite short and it'll be just fine. Okay, so once we've trimmed all of those corners, then we're just gonna tuck them and push them out. We're gonna do this with all four corners. So once we've got the corners all pushed out, I'm going to push them out with my finger nice and straight. Make sure that it's laying just like a little frame. And then we're going to take our middle fabric, and for this one we're using this cute farm print. And I've cut it an inch smaller than I need it to be to um, hide in there. And I just tuck it on in here. Okay, you're going to tuck it under all the way. Okay, and then you're going to pin it. And the way that I like to pin this is just along this edge, and we're going to pin it so that when I'm sewing, my pins can come out okay, very easily. So I pin this along here. And then because Cuddle likes to move a lot, we go and we pin it one more time. And I'm going to leave those pins as I sew. They're going to stay right there. And I'm going to come all the way along here and just stitch right along this raw edge with a nice wide long zigzag and stitch it all down. I've stitched all along this edge with a nice wide zigzag. On If you're using a cuddle, a straight cuddle backing for this, you can actually use a fancy stitch and use a blanket stitch or a zigzag stitch, serpentine stitch, anything that you want along there to add a little bit of uh, detail to it. But on the Lux Cuddle, I just use a zigzag and it works really, really well for that. So I've stitched all the way along, back stitch, I start at a corner, come all the way around. Then I go back through with my little stiletto and I'm gonna pull that Lux Cuddle up out of the stitches just a little bit there and at 
the corners where it wants to get stuck down into the seam. And it gives it this really nice finish once you've done that, and then it'll all be nice and puffy, super soft and luxurious. This project is a super easy one to do with all sorts of different fabrics. You can make it customized for your personal likes and or for your recipient for your gift. It's really quick and easy. It takes about an hour and a half. It's super duper simple. Um, you can make it in all sorts of different fabrics that are available at fatquartershop.com as well as the kits that are available for the cupcake and for the patty cakes.